Hey, I'm Riley Tifri with BevNet. I'm at NAX 2018 here in Las Vegas. I'm at the Co Kombucha booth, and I'm joined by Jared Smith, the VP of Sales for Stratus Group. Jared, thank you so much for being with me. Right, thanks for coming by. So Stratus Group, uh, an umbrella company for a couple different brands. What is the mission? What's the strategy behind Stratus Group? Yeah, um, we're really kind of a brand incubator. Um, we started out about a little, almost two years ago with Perfect Hydration Alkaline Water. Um, really grown that brand, um, focusing on the really Southern California market, and now starting to emerge as kind of a relevant brand and looking to grow outside of the, um, that region. Um, and then we've got Co Kombucha here. It's a, a shelf stable organic kombucha in a can with live probiotics. And Co Kombucha launched at last year's NAC show. Uh, tell us a little bit about how the brand has developed over the past year. Yeah, um, we've really spent the last year um, building out our, our sales strategy, really with distribution, getting that firmed up, connecting retailers. Um, and then really the brand has really launched, call it last 60 to 90 days. Um, we've launched some, some kind of cool retailers. I mentioned 24 Hour Fitness kind of early on. Um, we've got uh, early distribution with HEB, and um, we've got some other really exciting uh, retailers coming on, kind of call it six, 60 to 90 days. You mentioned Co Kombucha is a shelf stable kombucha. Um, what was why was that important? for the brand, why was that an important differentiator for you guys? Yeah, I think it um, it really helps our brand positioning. Um, as as we've kind of talked about, um, kombucha categories got about 10, 15% cate uh, household penetration. And with that, um, there's really nobody going after the other 85, 90% of the country. And so um, we really felt shelf stable was something that could really differentiate us. And then flavor, um, and you, I, once you taste it, I, you'll, you'll understand why, you'll come back for it. It's, it's, it's an awesome tasting kombucha. Speaking of demoing, you know, what's the awareness, what's the education, what's the sampling strategy for Co? So we have every intent to uh, build out a, a field marketing team kind of behind distribution, make sure that we're doing brand awareness, field events, uh, street events, retailer events, trade shows. I mean, you see we're here at NAX really early on in our brand development. We're really excited about because we feel we can get ahead of some of these other kombucha brands, especially in this mainstream kind of category that we're trying to, to bring to this, this, this kombucha category. The other thing you mentioned before we got on camera was that you're leaning heavily on the fact that Co has four billion probiotics per can. Um, why is that an important aspect of Co and its marketing strategy? No, I, I think it's a differentiator for us. So we've partnered with a pharmaceutical grade probiotic um, that survives um, ambient shelf temperatures. So, so beyond being a shelf stable kombucha, we're also a shelf stable probiotic drink, which I think is really exciting. Um, we're talking about 10, 15% household penetration on kombucha. Probiotics has an 80% kind of household penetration. People know what probiotics are. People are looking for new ways to consume them. We've heard that from, we've gotten that feedback at this show here. So it's been, it's, it's a cool thing. Uh, you used to work for Kavita. Yes. Um, how much of the playbook from Kavita and their success, you know, can you incorporate into Co? Um, you know what? Um, at Kavita, we had a huge emphasis on, on non-alcoholic beverages. Um, I would say we brought that here. We thought it was very, very important. So we have a non-alcoholic verified product um, all the way through the end of shelf life. Um, and then uh, really standardizing, letting people know with the probiotics how much they're getting. So $4 billion. That's kind of where we, we felt that the number could be. It's in line with the rest of the category. And um, it's, it's, it's a good number. So when a lot of mainstream consumers first try kombucha, mm -hmm. they're a little turned off by the flavor. Oftentimes, it's that vinegary, sour taste that you're not necessarily used to. Folks, Some folks do get accustomed to it mm -hmm. and really start to appreciate the taste of kombucha. Mm -hmm. Are you appealing, are you trying to appeal to a more of a mainstream audience or are you trying to get that kombucha customer that is already aware of what the taste is like and just sort of trying to advance their palate? No, and, and with that, um, I don't think we're really targeting a kombucha consumer. I think we'll pick some up along the way out of the convenience of it, the shelf stable piece, they can take it with them. It doesn't have to be in a, in a cooler of any sort. Um, but really, we're going after call it the coffee, tea, and juice, and soda crowd. Um, these people are looking for healthier alternatives, looking for functionality, looking for probiotics. Um, and so we feel that this is a great alternative and to grow the category. So talking that 10, 15%, we want to, we'd love to see it 20, 25% here in the next couple of years where we're pulling from, the, again, tea, coffee, juice, and, and soda. Fantastic. Jerry, this has been great. Really appreciate you taking the time. Good luck with the rest of the show and good luck with Co. Thanks, Ray. Appreciate it. Thank you.